Hey everybody, it's Chris Eads, known online as Woutini, with another Gay Gamer video podcast. Um, I know it's a bit late, but I did want to talk about Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which, as you know, I saw after I taped last episode. Um, it was okay, it was good. Um, this one takes place generations after the last one. Um, so the apes have set up, you know, societies and whatever. Um, and it centers around this young ape named Noah, who uh, his entire clan is abducted by evil apes, and he has to go on this quest to find and rescue them. Um, and of course, things get complicated along the way because it takes a long time. Um, that was one of my major problems with the movie was that it was it's just too long. It needed some judicious editing to bring it down. It did not need to be as long as it was. It really kind of drags in the middle. Um, the effects are terrific. They remain terrific. These apes are photorealistic. They're very impressive. Um, when, like, talking and motioning and doing stuff. When they're interacting with the real world, like climbing or, or swinging around and stuff, that's where it gets to be a little hicky sometimes, where it's like, they're not quite, like, climbing up the side of a, it was like, ooh, that's not a great animation of running, it doesn't feel like they're connecting, it doesn't feel quite real. Um, but the actual close-ups are just, like, photorealistic and amazing, and still very impressive. So the motion capture performances are terrific. Um, my problem was, is that it just dragged in the middle. Um, there are some twists that I was not expecting. Um, one I was not crazy about, um, because also at the end of the film, um, like the movie ends and it's like, okay, it, that was fine. And then there's like this epilogue that I feel was meant to go like in the mid or end credits. And they were like, no, we don't want to make people sit through the credits. So let's just tack it on to the actual end of the movie. Um, and unfortunately that epilogue is basically just set up for the next movie, which is frustrating because if it had been a stinger in the credits, I feel like it would have been fine because you would have had a complete story for the movie. But by tacking it on to the end of the movie, it kind of ruined the ending because it feels unfinished because it's just, okay, now like this story ends, but here's more for a sequel. It's like the first one, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, where it was a good movie, and then you get to the end, you're like, oh, but this is what I really wanted to see with the apes and everything, and you have to wait for the next movie for that. Um, this was like that, except because of this twist, which I don't want to spoil in case you haven't seen it yet, um, in the end, this epilogue, it sets up a sequel that I don't necessarily really want to watch because this isn't the story that I want them to be telling with these apes. I want to follow the apes. So it's like, like I have an idea in my head of what I would like to see, but then they're like, no, no, we're going to do this. And I'm just like, this is a plot twist that I'm not crazy about. So, um, it, it, and I can't really explain why because I don't want to spoil it, but it's setting up sequels that I feel are just going to be repetitive and not as interesting as they could be if they really tried to do something different. So it's good. Go see it. Enjoy it. Um, we'll see what the next one brings. Um, as for games, um, I have continued to play Little Kitty Big City, which continues to be absolutely charming and adorable and funny. Um, I just... The problem is that I know it's not going to be a long game, and I'm already at the point now where I could finish it if I wanted to. Um, but, like, I was... Because right in the beginning, you get a fish. I explained this last time. You you fall out of your apartment windowsill, and you have to, like, climb back up. But you can't because you're not strong enough. So you have to eat four fish in order to gain climbing ability so that you can get all the way up. Each fish gives you one more level of climbing ability to give you more time to climb before you fall. Um, the first fish you get right away. Uh, and then I was, I found another fish, but I said, let me leave that. And I'm going to explore and do side quests and talk to other animals and do other things and find stuff. And then in doing the other side quests, I came across two. Well, in doing one of them, I just stumbled across randomly by like up on a rooftop I was like oh it's over here and then I found this woman's house with her fit and she had a fish in the kitchen and you just had to get past her to get to the fish the other one 
was even easier because I was doing the side quest where you have to, this duck needs you to help find his ducklings. And you go around the city and you find the four ducklings and you solve whatever puzzle trouble to get them free to join you to come back to him. And one of them, they were in a, in a convenience store and on display was a fish and you just had to figure out how to get to the fish. It wasn't hard. And you eat that fish and then you can climb more. And, um, and yesterday when I was playing, I actually went and got the fish from the fisherman. And now I have the ability to climb home and end the game. But the problem is, is that I don't know if when you end the game, if that's the end of the game, if you can go back out to do more stuff or if you'd have to start a new game. Because there are still achievements that I have not completed. Um, like there's some that I've started and I haven't finished because it's like get your picture taken by people 20 times and I've only done, gotten 12 pictures or whatever. And then there's other achievements that I haven't even discovered what they might be. And there's one, I still have one more animal to talk to and I'm like, is that something out there or is it at the very end when you go home? I don't know. I don't want to spoil things with the looking it up online because I would like to see like where I want to discover things for myself if possible. So I'm at the point now where I could finish the game, but I don't want to because I still want to explore and make sure I've seen everything to get as much enjoyment out of this as I can because it is not a long game. But it is charming and delightful, and I do recommend it. Um, I've also been playing quite a lot of Disney Dreamlight Valley because um, they just keep adding stuff. As I mentioned last time, they've started this new star path, and so I've been doing... I've been ignoring the new Daisy Duck. I've not even done any of her quests yet because I'm focusing on the star path and getting all the star path duties done so that I can get all of the rewards. Um, because the rewards are pretty cool. But now they've also, this last week, they started the uh, Dreamlight Parks Fest, which basically is like a limited time event for a few weeks where uh, you do special quests for people and you can craft these special items and you basically get like stuff to make your, you get like rides and like food stands and balloons and park benches and whatever, and you can basically turn Dreamlay Valley, your Dreamlay Valley into Disneyland with rides and everything. Um, the problem is, is that you, I discovered this past week, you can't get rid of the houses that you've placed. I was like, let me just get rid of Vanellope's house and I'll put down a ride. The problem is, I couldn't get rid of Vanellope's house. You have to just relocate it. And there's only a limited amount of space in your valley. So it's like, if you want to create a theme park in your valley, you're going to have to relocate all of your houses and cram them together into the side regions all on top of each other. And I'm just like, that's going to look really ugly. So I don't know if I really want to do that. Uh, it's also really tedious to have to like move things around and then because you can't place things because you have to like erase what's below it. And if there's a flower there, you have to go pick that flower and clear the space and then you can put the house down. Like, it won't just automatically put the house down. It's really frustrating. Um, but yeah, it's, so that's been keeping me very busy. I've been playing a lot of that. Um, so I have not played any Immortals of Avian this past week because I've been playing just... My play, PlayStation 5 is all Disney Dreamlight Valley all the time. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, Ubisoft uh, finally revealed Assassin's Creed Shadows. Um, and of course all the racists came out to play because they're all objecting to the fact that you have two lead characters to play. One is an Asian woman and one is a black man. And so of course they are all upset. Um, fuck them. Um, so the trailer was cool. It looked like a great movie. I would totally go see that movie. Um, the game, who knows at this point? Um, I read an article to just get an idea um, because, of course, they're, you know, tweaking things. And you are playing as two characters. So some missions are one or the other. And then some, and then other missions, like side quests and whatever, are like, you can choose how you want to do it. Because she's like the stealthy assassin type. And he's the, like, I'm going to bash your brains in with a club type. So you can, you know, choose how you want to attack the mission. You want to go stealth? You want to go all in? I, you know, and that's an interesting, you know, angle on the gameplay. 
Um, but I would still, I'm still looking forward to seeing a, a gameplay trailer so I can see what the game will actually look like and play like. Because, um, you know, a cinematic trailer is not really helpful. It gets you in the mood, but it doesn't tell you if you want to get the game or not. So this, like Star Wars Outlaws, I'm waiting for reviews. Uh, I'm not buying it on day one because I need to see what the reviews are like. Because even though Assassin's Creed Shadows is a sequel, it's not like a direct sequel. You know, like Spider-Man 2, it's okay, I'll buy that on day one because I know it's going to be as good as Spider-Man 2. They're not going to change too much. But Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft always likes to tweak the gameplay and they'll like change this, that, and the other thing and stuff so you get a slightly different experience. Uh, which is why I never played Assassin's Creed Mirage, because that felt like the original Assassin's Creed games that I didn't really care for. It was more of an assassin adventure stealth game, um, and I prefer the RPG ones, like Origins and Odyssey and Valhalla. So this is more like the RPG games, but I still feel like they're going to tweak gameplay and stuff, but I just want to make sure that it's good. Also, the other thing that you need to be careful of with Ubisoft, and especially just open world games in general, um, buying them on day one is always a sketchy proposition because they're going to need, there's going to be a day one patch, first of all, and then there's probably going to be a few more patches in like the first week or two to fix all the bugs and gameplay glitches and whatever else they missed when they released the game. Because nothing ever comes out perfect. Um, so I'm waiting on that. So, uh, I'm going to just, you know, keep playing Disney, and when I finish uh, Little Kitty Big City, which I'll probably do in the next few days, um, I'll probably, that's when I'll go back to Immortals of Avenue, because I've basically been ignoring that for a week. Um, so come back next time, and I will talk about more stuff. Um, Furiosa comes out, I'll be talking about that, and then I'll give final thoughts on Little Kitty Big City, probably, and then who knows what else I'll talk about. See you then! Bye!